This is Biblical Insights with Dr. Jim Dennison of the Dennison Forum, answering today's toughest questions. Okay, Jim, this is what I've heard. Heard people say and people question, are there really demons? Are they real? As yes. opposed to just what you find in the Bible or what you see in a movie or some such as that. That's a great question. It's something I had wondered, of course, over the years. And then I became a missionary in East Malaysia when I was in college. And one day I was talking to one of the pastors there and he asked me about my exorcism ministry. Well, I didn't have an exorcism ministry. Okay. And this is a very conservative uh, biblical scholar that was asking me this question. And I asked him why he would ask me the question. And was that a real thing for them where they were there in East Malaysia? And he said, well, in their culture, at least back at that point in time, they dealt with a lot of people who worshipped various spirits. They would worship the God of the stars or the God of the trees. It's animism sort of a thing. And they were inviting spiritual beings into their lives. And so they were having to deal with these demons on a very real level. And he was asking me if we'd had to do that in the States. And I said, well, no, not to my knowledge. Was that anything? I knew the Catholic Church had a history of dealing with exorcisms, but wasn't anything that I as a minister had ever really come across. Well, from that time to this, I have had experiences with people occasionally where I really do think that demon possession or demon oppression was a very real thing. I was teaching a Bible study once and there was a college student in our group. She was wearing occult jewelry. She was wearing occult clothing and was very, very angry the whole time that she was there. At the last session, she and I got a chance to talk together. She told me that when she was in college, she joined a group that was worshiping various spirits and inviting them into their lives. And she had invited this one spirit, she even named the spirit, into her life. And now she wanted to get rid of it. And what should she do? Well, nothing I had studied in seminary prepared me for that conversation. And so uh, the minister on the staff and I met with her and we talked with her and we explained what we thought was happening here. She had never asked Christ to be her Lord and Savior. She had not done that. Uh, She had never made a commitment to Christ. And this was really her first spiritual experience, if you want to call it that. And she'd invited this terrible being into her life. So we led her through a process of asking Jesus to be her Lord and Savior, uh, committing her life to Him, and then saying to this spirit that in the name of Jesus, she was commanding this spirit to leave her body. And I watched her She began to shake. She grabbed our our hands. And then in just a moment, she looked at us and it was like she was a different person, Mm. a different personality in her body. The first thing she did was take off her occult jewelry and give that to the staff member that was there. Some years later, she wound up actually marrying a pastor. I heard from her just a few years ago. And so I had that experience with the reality of this. All through scripture, demons are real. Jesus dealt with demons through his ministry. We know from the New Testament, not only that they're real, we know that they're fallen angels, that they rebelled against the Lord along with Satan and were cast out of heaven as a result of that. And so they're fallen angelic beings. We know that they hate us. We know that they seek to possess us. If you're a Christian, they cannot possess you, but they can oppress you. They can attack you. They can tempt you. They can be used by the enemy in your life, but they can't possess you because you're already possessed by Jesus. You already belong to him. But they can attack you and oppress you. We know that they seek to steal, kill, and destroy, as Jesus said of Satan himself. And we know that Jesus is more powerful than they are. Whenever Jesus shows up, they lose. There's one particular story. You and I have been to Israel together and we've been to that one place on the eastern side of the Sea of Galilee where there's that herd of pigs that were uh, that uh, Jesus cast demons into and then they, they ran down that bank and they ran into the Sea of Galilee and they were drowned. That's what demons do. They steal, kill, and destroy. And we've been to the very place where that happened. Jesus is more powerful than they are today, not just in the New Testament era but today. So I'd summarize all that by saying, if you're a Christian, they cannot possess you, but they can oppress you. They can seek to tempt you and to oppress you. Whenever you're facing temptation, take it immediately to Jesus. Go instantly to him. Ask him for the strength that you need, because in him you always win. Someone said God plus one is a majority, and that is always the case. Thank you for watching Biblical Insights with Dr. Jim Dennison of the Dennison Forum. Follow us by clicking below for more answers to today's toughest questions.